Station Thunder Radio, the one and only home of Let's Talk Antiques on your airwaves. Thanks for tuning in, boys. Introduce good, yourselves. Good morning. My <coughs> name is Ray Sickler. Ronnie Branch. Philip Scoggins. Ray, I'm gonna have you pull that. I'm gonna have you pull that mic up a little bit. Yes. How about that? Well, then there's that. <laughs> there's that. That's there's the always best. that. <laughs> boys, gonna talk about old stuff now. Yeah. Well, sometime at some point this morning, we're gonna talk about some old stuff. And uh, children's games. Yeah, Dangerous children's games. Yeah. I left a bunch of old looking things at <laughs> the restaurant there a while ago. Yeah. You there like you go. That's the top of, of the list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, so we we have a, our theme today kind of off is uh, toys, especially dangerous toys, and uh, and pretty much topping the list is uh, the famous lawn darts. They were actually called jarts. Jarts. <clears throat> Uh, risk-taking millennials create their own danger unaided by toys they eat tide pods and perform perilous stunts such as walking on ledges of tall buildings to increase their views on YouTube but back in the 60s and 70s toy manu- toy builders uh, I'm sorry toy manufacturers were complicit in putting kids and teens in peril all by themselves uh, producing retail games and gadgets that were fun but fraught with hazards Perhaps the most infamous of these uh, unstable items was the lawn dart, a projectile that was invented in the 1950s and inspired by darts that was ubiquitous of bar games. A typical set of lawn darts came with four large darts and uh, two plastic hula hoops that acted as targets. The darts had three fins on one end for flight stability and a weighted metal tip on the other. Typically, players would toss the darts underhanded horizontally with some arch toward the target with hopes it would stick in the ground inside the ring. It was somewhat similar to horseshoes. Unfortunately, with their sharp, relatively heavy ends, lawn darts, (laughs) also known as jarts, which are short for javelin darts, were basically hand-operated missiles and injuries were common. Uh, Lawn darts remained popular (laughs) through much of the 1980s, But in 1987, the death of a seven-year-old sent her father on a crusade to have the toys outlawed. Uh, David Snow was an aerospace engineer from uh, Riverside, uh, California. He bought a combo pack of yard games for the volleyball set that it contained and left the other two games, one of which was lawn darts in the box in his garage. After some time, Snow's nine-year-old son and some of his friends found the lawn darts and began playing with them in the backyard, and one of the kids threw the dart, a dart over the fence and into the front yard where Snow's seven-year-old daughter, Michelle, uh, was hit in the head. Uh, she died three days later. Wow. Yeah, so that's horrible. That, that's a yeah. terrible thing. Uh, stricken, stricken with grief and need to do something to prevent injuries to other kids, uh, Snow went on a crusade to have lawn darts banned. Uh, These things killed my child. If I don't do anything, it's just a matter of time before someone else gets killed. And I'm going to get them off the market, whatever it takes. Snow began researching the danger of lawn darts and discovered that they had already been banned in the United States. But that the ban had been challenged by the manufacturer and distributors of the toy uh, during the late 1970s. Uh, the Consumer Product Safety Commission had reinstated the game to the retail shelves, provided that the darts were manufactured only to adults, adults and not sold in the toy departments or toy stores. For Snow, the death of his daughter was evidence enough that the sales uh, <laughs> regulations and game for adults only labeling wasn't enough to protect children from lawn darts. Uh, He peppered public officials with letters and phone calls. He lobbied to have the ban put back in place. Snow took his cause to the the Public Safety Commission, which determined that a complete ban on the game couldn't be justified by the couple of dozen lawn dart injuries that they had on their books. Snow asked them to double-check their numbers, and the commission did a further study, separating lawn dart injuries from all dart-related injuries, and they discovered that over an eight-year period, more than 6,100 people, most of which <coughs> children 15 or younger, had been hurt by lawn darts. Yeah. And many of them were per- left permanently, permanent injuries and dis- disabilities. 
The majority of the injuries were to the face, head, ears, and eyes. During Snow's crusade, where he petitioned the uh, Public Safety Commission, um, he gave interviews with TV and newspaper reporters and met with consumer product safety commissioners, including President Reagan's assistant for uh, consumer affairs. Restrictions on sales of lawn darts were lightened, or tightened, sorry. Ultimately, the Public right. Safety Commission <laughs> voted to ban the sale of lawn darts altogether, and a week before Christmas 1982, they were removed from the store <clears throat> shelves permanently. Canada followed with a similar ban. Week before Christmas, people had already bought them. Yeah. You know, I read a story last night on the <laughs> internet about this guy had went around Donald Trump's uh, campaign and he had a guitar and he was sang Trump songs and up for him and everything. Yeah. Then his son overdosed on drugs, so now he's against Trump because Trump evidently lied to him because he said he's going to do something about the open addiction. <laughs> so his son died, so now Trump's responsible for that boy yeah, dying. Yeah. Um, nah, Trump. I tried to write him back or, or text him back and told him, I said, look, I, I lost a daughter two years ago to drugs too, <clears throat> but I said, our, con our actions have consequences. Yeah, you, you can't yeah. blind... Blaming somebody Politicians else. Politicians for something sure. like That's that. Right. Yeah. For, you know, people are responsible for their own actions. Mm. But that's how people are so but that's men, that To me, that's a mental illness. Very yeah. bad. You know. I mean, his child's lost and died, and I understand his feelings because I've got the same feelings, but I don't blame but, it on somebody else. Right. You can't blame no one but the child. All right. Um... A company called Proof still markets and sells darts, but they're much different than the, than the original darts of the past. Instead of metal uh, missiles of yesteryear, they feature, feature round rubber tips that land on the target instead of sticking into the ground. Uh, they come with, they're, they're, you can get them for 20 bucks, and there's also a, a swimming pool version of them. And uh, to remove virtually all possibilities of injury, there are Nerf darts which are even <laughs> softer than the, than the rubber kind. And uh, one of the guys tells a story about uh, in the 19, late 1960s when my mom came home from shopping, she had bought the lawn darts. Uh, she probably thought that they would be a good outdoor activity for us kids. My brothers were off somewhere at the time, and I had the lawn darts all to myself, so I set them up in the yard and started playing. Uh, he was excited about trying to trying out the lawn darts but also a bit cautious when I when you're a kid you don't really think about a toy being dangerous but in the case of lawn darts I remember my initial reaction to those things where I picked one up and thought those darts are really heavy and the metal points on the <laughs> on the darts were sharp and the base were a thick piece of metal the whole looks of those darts intimidated me uh, he said it was a toy and it was a game what harm could it be I threw the lawn darts a couple of times and tried to land them on the target, the yellow plastic circle on the ground. Uh, those darts hit the ground with a thud and stuck fast. Sometimes it took quite a bit of effort to even pull them out of the ground. I got them in the target a couple of times and I missed the target a couple of times. Then one of my throws landed right on the target ring and I went to get the dart and discovered that it had cut the target ring and split it apart. Wow. And that kind of spooked me. And as kids sometimes do, he said, I carried on despite the risks. Uh, continued playing with the darts. He said, then one of the throws went wild and soared straight up into the air. It was hard to tell where it would land, and I raced around wildly trying to spot it, uh, spot it out and avoid it. But I lost sight of the giant dart and almost landed on top of me. I ended up grazing my ankle and drawing blood. It wasn't a bad cut, just enough to need a washing off and a Band-Aid. Uh, but that was enough to uh, to to uh, get me back to playing with my G.I. Joes, my Mark's play sets, and other toys, relegating yeah. the lawn darts to the garage. <laughs> <laughs> so that was somebody from the 60s. Well, when I was a kid, I would have tried to throw it at a dog or a horse oh. or something. <laughs> no telling. I was like, let's see what I can stick with this. Yeah, no, though, I, rem I never owned it myself, fellow, but I remember I mean, being I around. Kid. Uh, I and look on looking on eBay, I found one uh, one set that is vintage 1970s uh, Regent Slider Jarts Lawn Darts, but it it has the metal <laughs> tips removed. It's got the rings, 
the uh, plastic bases and the box, and uh, and it was uh, for sale for forty dollars. Now these boxes are, are really doing all right. I found some boxes. What do you got? I don't need that here. I haven't found any darts, but I found some boxes. You mean they're valuable? The boxes are, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're collectible. Here's a vintage wow. darts missile game. Outdoor lawn darts box, empty, uh, box only, $130. Uh, one for 112 No, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm telling you wrong. I'm, I'm looking at I got a, auctions uh, that are going on right uh, now. Okay. Let me find you some complete I got auctions. a 1970s Go jar. Them. Lawn darts game cardboard box mm. only, mm. one hundred and twenty-five dollars for cardboard box. Wow. It is, by the way, is it, it is against eBay rules if I didn't say that to uh, sell these online right. because they're they've been banned, so they don't oh. Oh. they don't allow you to sell the game or at least the metal tipped parts. Yeah. Right. But, but you can mm. still sell the box and get a bunch of money for it. Well, I have some boxes here. Yeah, if I had a box for one hundred twenty dollars, I'd feel good. Yeah, oh, there's real good. Yeah. Here. I found another one for a uh, hundred dollars. Uh, all of them are all the boxes look different too. It's kind of odd. Uh, here's a 1968 Hasbro set. Um, it's just the box. Well, it has the instructions with it. Ninety dollars plus twenty dollars shipping. It's pretty steep shipping for a um, cardboard box. Empty box. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one here for 125, but I'm stuck on this page here for some reason. Uh oh, you're. You're yeah. locked up on it. I'm locked up on it. Or it might be. That's gonna smell the way home. Here's a vintage one that looks Same looks like a, one of the really old ones. Uh, it's the box only, eighty-one dollars. Free shipping on that one. Nineteen seventy, so get you sixty-five dollars for one. Man, that's pretty good for an empty box. There's and there's quite a bit. Quite a bit been sold, and you can also buy the replacement fins <laughs> for the uh, for the Hasbro 1968 Hasbro Javelin darts uh, for forty eight dollars for the replacement fins. For the fins, the little plastic. Yeah, fins. just the plastic fins for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see. Now it's uh. This first box I was telling you about for $125, mm -hmm. he did bring that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, I was on the right page. They were just wasn't showing up green for some reason. Oh, okay. I've got a 68 Hasbro Javelin Darts Lawn Darts original box and instructions. <clears throat> I brought $90. And then I have one from the 70s. Uh, the box only now. Brought uh, eighty-seven ninety-nine. With fifteen shipping. Fifteen shipping. Yeah, fifteen dollars yeah. shipping for a box, <laughs> for an empty box. Well, they rolled in on that shipping. Then I have a uh, the Jarts Missile Game, outdoor lawn darts, the box only. Brought eighty-one dollars. Then I have. Another Jarts Lawn Darts game, the box and rings. There is some rings with this box. It's the green box with yeah. open on one end because some are different than others. Oh, yeah. You know, actually, mm. I guess they do have essentially hula hoops inside of them. So maybe, you know, I guess that, that is kind of a big thing to ship. So Yeah, 65 bucks. So I guess the boxes are mm. pretty big. This one had $12 shipping on it. And somebody bought it on a buy now. Hmm. And I have one here that bought seventy four ninety nine. <clears throat> it's like they took the best offer, but it's probably around seventy dollars anyway. Okay. But this is the Jarts box only. Fun lawn darts, seventies, and it's got the instructions with it. Like I say it brought about seventy dollars. Then I have a vintage charts missile game, outdoor lawn darts, a box and two rings. It's in that two rings. <clears throat> Brought seventy four ninety nine. I don't know to buy it now. Say so seventy five dollars. I don't think that had any rings with that. No two rings. Yeah. 
Then you know it's surprising that there's this many on there that are selling. You know, it seems yes. like there'd be For something the boxes, that there would be I'm just like, a couple of things uh, going, not I, not lists and lists of. I'm wondering so. if anybody's got the darts to go in the box. You know, here's a darts, radiant slider, lawn darts, another box. But this is a red box. It's a little different. Probably sixty-five dollars. I'm gonna buy it now. Yeah, maybe you have to go to the yard sales and the flea markets to get the darts. Get you some so. darts and put yeah. them in your box, and then you got something that can't be sold anymore. Yeah. We had this game. Over. Did you? Did you have that? Game we had too? this game when I was a kid, and yeah. did you play and, it? And yes, and if you've never heard me tell the story, I had two older brothers. So they who were, used to beat oh, on so me they all tied the time. To the fence and well, I mean, <laughs> you know, they broke the heads off my dolls. They were Indian rubbers. They were yeah. Charlie horses. They, they were they hold you down the spit hangs. And I mean, <laughs> they. That's not funny, Ray. I wasn't telling a joke. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, but I'm saying I'm super surprised that I didn't have some type of injury from the lawn charts. Like, ser I'm very being very very yeah. serious. You should have been the one throwing the darts at them. Hey, they had her up against the dartboard. I they never got a turn you. to do anything fun. Yeah. I never got a turn. Oh my gosh. And All right. Well, with that, let's let's take us a commercial break, and we'll be right back. By the grace of God. There you go. When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor, and I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. Hello, I'm Pick and Rick T from CFC, best place to get your used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. $2 fee is all you pay. Sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rental. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual, construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931-273-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way at the Jiffy Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 7.30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. The day the Lord created hope could be the same day he created spring. Springtime's here. It's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you. Hey everybody, we're back with Talking Antiques and the number here is 728-1320. Oh Max, you know I bet he got to go out to Monroe this year. I bet he can't sing a lick now. He's yeah. so wore out. I Probably think so. Mac was headlined. I think he was, was probably one of the headliners. I believe Max I, was I think headlining. I saw him running around with a big feather headset and, mm. and a bunch of glitter all over him. That yeah. yeah. sounds like Max. I thought, boy, that looks just like Max. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was probably him. In the know. There you go. All right, so uh, so continuing with our with our dangerous toy theme, uh, here's here's an article that was written by a lady talking about her her childhood. Uh, it says. It's a wonder I survived my childhood. Nothing came with a warning telling my parents that plastic bags could kill me or that it was dangerous to step on the top rung of a ladder. Uh, this week's cover story on lawn darts made me think of the 1960s and early 70s childhood. Thank heavens the toys I had. 
Uh, I had all the Marks Johnny West dolls and accessories. Those accessories were tiny. I could have easily swallowed them. <laughs> there were moving parts. I remember getting my fingers pinched trying to arrange uh, Thunderbolt, which is Johnny West's horse, into just the right position. <laughs> One Christmas, I got a Mattel Creepy People Maker. I had this too, by the way. This stuff came with a hot plate. You poured this goop into the mold. It looked kind of like gummy bears, but you didn't eat it. Uh, I remember the hot plate, and it was really hot. I had, an, I had it upstairs in my brother's bedroom. How easy would that have been to burn down the house? According to Wikipedia, the open-faced hot plate heated to 390 degrees. Good. You poured, yeah, you poured a liquid <clears throat> chemical substance, uh, the company called Plastigoop, into metal molds. I wonder what was in that chemical substance. It was Plastigoop. <clears throat> Once, exactly. Once the Plastigoop was cured by the could've heat, been anything. it would uh, cook into a rubbery type material that could be popped from the mold. Uh, I found a copy of the 60s box online and it... And it said to give the things you made as gifts to your friends. Dear people, if I ever gave you a creepy people eraser, I'm very sorry. Uh, <laughs> <No>. it, <clears throat> evidently, there was different mold sets, including Tarzan and Superman. But all I remember making were the bugs. The last of this line was sold in 1970. And the Wikipedia article says the line was discontinued due to safety concerns of giving a child a hot plate as a toy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the creepy people maker is on every list I could find of the most dangerous mm. toys of the 60s and 70s. I can't hey, believe that. Common, common sense wasn't as uh, <laughs> common as I thought back then. <laughs> yeah. so. Nah, so, back then, you know, you just. You got burned toy once or toy. twice and you quit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you were careful with it. Yeah. And easy bake ovens. I remember getting mm. burned on one of them when I was playing with kids. There oh, we man, go. Here's I had next. All kinds of chemicals, chemistry yeah. sets, wood burning <laughs> sets. Says, I remember being burned by, by the light bulbs that heated my Kenner Easy Bake Oven. Yep. Now the ovens use a uh, specialized heat source, but originally they were heated by two 100-watt <clears throat> light bulbs. I got my Easy Bake Oven one Christmas when I was at my great-grandmother's house. I can't remember <laughs> if she got it for me, which seems doubtful, or if I bought it, brought it with me from home. But I remember my cousins and me easy, eagerly mixing up the packages of cake mix and patiently waiting for the cakes to be done. That thing that for Grandma must have been yeah. cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I also remember how horribly disappointing that the cake were, cakes were. Who knows why I even got an Easy Bake Oven. I knew how to cook real cakes in a real oven. Another fun 1960s toy was the super elastic bubble plastic. <laughs> That, that came in the little tube. You remember you'd squeeze it out and put it on the end of the straw and blow on it? And it said the problem with mm. the bubbles contained chemicals like polyvinyl acetate mm. found in glue Good and night. ethyl acetate, which is nail polish remover. And if you inhaled it, you got a mouthful mm. of toxic fumes. <laughs> Not to mention I had a wood burning kit. Seriously, it's a wonder I survived childhood. The wood burner kit had me burn... had a wood burning tool that you had to plug into an electrical outlet. Did it have an automatic shut off? I doubt it. No, I definitely didn't. No, yeah, I didn't. you <laughs> have you ever been <clears throat> part of a group go in a grocery store and, and they go by the dairy department and pick up cans of the whipped cream that sprays and they empty that gas into your lungs. You sound like Mickey Mouse when you come out of there. I've never done that. It works. Yeah, well, that's that's nitrous oxide. Mm. That's a wild. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the, the, it, it, no, it's nitrous oxide. Nitrous. It's the it's the laughing gas deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Well, it's unbelievable what you sound like. You won't believe. Yeah. It. <laughs> well, you bring the can next week and demonstrate. There you I don't go. believe yeah, I we'll, can no we'll more. <laughs> I'm not bad enough. <laughs> I said, uh, okay, the uh, wood burning kit. I said, I distinctly remember my brother Andy and me. Threatening to burn each other with the hot tool. Yeah, I had that one, the wood burning. <laughs> yeah. My youngest brother, Sam, had plastic army men that had tiny parts we would chew off if we so desired. And I'm pretty sure that we m may have had a slip and slide. Since none of this killed me, my parents got me a horse when I was 11 years old. He didn't kill me either, fortunately. Although my brother, Andy, or maybe it was Sam, did shoot me with a BB gun. Andy and Sam played real soldiers in the sandbox with the Green Army man, 
and often shot shot at them with BB guns. Yeah, you know, I've, I've I, done that one. I've done that to my own brother. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hit him up against a tree, and we were playing military, and I was yeah. going to kill him for being Excuse a man. Him. Yeah, hit him right between the eyes with that BB. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, how, how smart was that? I did that one. Man. Uh, you don't give a kid a BB gun. No. You. And you don't give think. a... 16 year old, a 22 rifle, unless he knows what it's about. Yeah. yeah. I, I like lost my oldest son to one of them things. Oh, oh, yeah. Shot him right in the stomach in the living room. His brother wow. in law. Got one back in the bedroom, got rat shot in it. Yeah. So I can't Scary remember. stuff can happen. I can't remember the circumstances of how I got shot, but I was hit in the back of my leg by a BB. Luckily, it barely left a bruise, but whichever brother shot me lost the BB gun for a while once mom found out. And my brothers point out, Mom would not have found out if I hadn't have been such a tattletale. <laughs> so I had... Peter got shot again for telling. I, I can remember my uh, three oldest ones got set a field of fire one time. They wouldn't, nobody confessed to doing nothing wrong. Of course, years later, they'll tell you everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So I had every one of these toys, except for the Easy Bake Oven. But the Easy Bake Oven, my best friend's little sister had one. So yeah. we would we would cook little horrible tasting cakes in hers. Yeah, and they so. eat her Easy Bake Cakes. <laughs> yeah. I you know them little Easy Bake Cakes were high. You could buy a real cake. Oh, yeah, exactly. For what them little Easy Bake Cakes cost. Yes, sir. For less. Okay, I got some things here. All right. What are, what are you looking up there? Um, several different things. I got some vintage... I'm going to tell Thing Maker Mold. Got a lot of 34 creepy crawlers, people, flowers from the 60s. Yeah. We had, I'd say, we got my aunt's. I think my aunt got one for Christmas in the 60s. And me and my brother found it in the late 70s. And it still had the mm. the the thing, the plastic goop. And, uh, and we used to make, <laughs> she had like, tons of different molds and that was one of my favorite mm. toys ever but boy you grab that thing wrong and it would burn you yeah, you gotta quick. let them, let them cook or put yeah. them in a fridge or something yeah, we had like a monster Those maker thing cool. and you could you would make like different pieces of of monsters and then you would like they would have like a like a groove like the you know something would an arrow mm. would go into a hole on a part of it and you would build a little monster that'd be about three or four inches tall and you know you could make it any color you wanted with the plastic goop it was lots of fun and it, we used up all the goop and then we found uh, mm. found some like where we ordered some from the manufacturer or something and got got some more at one point huh. so, so y'all were back in business so we were back me. in business for a while with it it was it was a lot of fun I mm, really, yeah i love stuff i like really that. love that thing okay then i got a vintage 1965 some more molds here this is a thing maker, so this would probably be more like the monsters. Uh, twenty four forty nine, and then I have a another six nineteen sixty five. This is a creepy crawler. So there's four different modes. I think it's actually well, no, they're all different. So there's four different uh, modes yeah. for about twenty five dollars. I got a uh, nineteen seventy one. <laughs> Never open, still sealed, easy bake oven for that went for eighty dollars. You guys ever eat the stuff that comes out of an easy bake oven? It is not very good. I no. am <laughs> going to completely disagree with you. It is oh, like really? the bomb. Okay. I don't know what they put in that stuff, and maybe it's your. You talk about the new ones or the nineteen no, seventies one? Oh, I don't know anything yeah. that I've ever had that came out of an easy bake oven. It was like. Uh, Give me more, and it's never enough because you know, it's just itty bitty we tiny. We ate it, but we didn't. You know. Maybe it was your baker. <laughs> Why? Well, did the baker yeah. fess up, Philip? Oh, it was me. If you were a dad with a daughter that had that, and you said it wasn't good, <laughs> you'd in trouble anyway. Oh, well, oh, you don't yeah. get a dad oh, man, award. Man, it tastes good. Well, you can't tell the kid it tastes oh, yeah. bad. Well, anyway. the ones no. my kids made were great. So you it, tell that's the kids different, it's though. delicious. <laughs> you trying to clean that up, really? Make us some more. I'm talking about the one me and my best friend played with. Well, there you go. 
You know what little boys are made of. All right. Well, well let's you, take a commercial break, and we'll we'll, yep. we'll look we that up. We used Martha White self-rising meal and iron. It was always good. Hey, those easy bake oven cake mixes are incredible. All right, I'm say so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We need to head to a break and pay the bills. You're tuned into your hometown station, Thunder Radio, for Let's Talk Antiques. The day the Lord created hope could be the same day he created spring. Springtime's here. It's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rental. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931-273-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way at the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 730 until 9, Monday through Saturday. When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor, and I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. Hello, I'm Pick and Rick T from CFC, best place to get your used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay. Sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. Hey everybody, we're back with Talking Antiques and the number here is 728-1320. All right, we're back. That was Brenda Lee, I believe, on that lead in, wasn't it? Yeah. I knew her personally for years. She was a sweetheart. Did you really? Great cool. singer, yeah. Awesome. How well did you know her, Ray? Well, I lived about two miles from her and her... Uh, Let's see. Her dad, I believe, was a micro midget racer. Yeah. And Marty uh, Robbins, and we were all going to see micro midget mm-hmm. races together. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. That's a friend of mine. His uh, his dad produced all the Judd's albums. Yeah. And uh, he said that he uh, what he had to mow their the Judd's yard. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it was did. like you know how you have to mow yards, you know, when you're a yeah. teenager and whatnot. <clears throat> and he said that uh, he said by then they had a they had a pretty decent yard and, and a pool out back. And he said he would uh, Ashley Judd would be out there sunbathing by the pool, and he'd be running over stuff in the yard <laughs> trying, to, trying to watch her uh, rubber naked. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I tell you what, I used to think she's a beautiful girl, but that was hearing that potty mouth, I said, Nah, uh, nah you know, she ain't no happen to me no more. Okay. So, uh, so we, I looked up the plastic goop. Yeah, which is I was the here stuff about the plastic goop. The plastic goop is, you know, what you use with the thing maker. Uh, so you can get a set with uh, one, two, uh, two large 12 ounce uh, plastic goops. This is the vintage original. Yeah. And, uh, and four smaller ones, uh, seven and a half ounce. Two hundred dollars. Good, good lord. For those. Mm. And then there's a. Give nice, me some high dollar figures nowadays. There's another one that's two ounce bottles that are six two ounce bottles mm. went for two hundred dollars. And then here's the uh, like an entire set uh, for a hundred and seventy nine. So, 
So those those things are bringing good money. So I'm you're sure. saying if you buy the plastic hoop nowadays, you don't want to make the figures out of it. Yeah, uh, sure, you have high to. Dollar figures. No, no, you, they're high dollar figures. Mm, is what it that's is. what that's what it is. That's like you know you got to drive just, your old Corvette. You know, I yeah, mean, that's, that's, just that's high it. dollar figures. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you still you have your be able creepy to people? It. I do not. I'm sure my, one time, you know, a couple of years where me and my brother didn't play with it and didn't come to visit my grandmother at the right, right time, and she Grandma cleaned it, got mad cleaned and got it up and threw it away. Uh, <laughs> she didn't get mad. She just decided we were too big for it or something. Yeah, you're never she too would, big for toys. She'd get rid of them and throw them away. So, you know, you can, you can realize how our country is going down here so bad or has in the past eight, ten years. Yeah. I, uh, People make fun of people talking to God, you know, or they just don't believe in all that. And this guy was talking in her thing in the, on the Internet that she had seen three red Corvettes all at one, within a span of hours. Yeah. She said, it must have been God talking to me. This other guy chimed in and answered her back and says, God's not that slow. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. She, you're never too old for toys, I tell you. Me and David used to go to the toy section up at Walmart, and we'd be like a couple of kids. Oh, yeah? You know, pushing them out of the way, going to grab this toy. Well, I'm you know, when I, I first started going over to David's D, when I first come here, yeah. I saw all them old toys up there, and I thought, I need to leave a bigger tip. David needs to get some new toys. Of them look old and rusty. Yeah, he changed them out. <laughs> oh, I know it. I just kid. I didn't have that much sense. I didn't yeah. know what, what the deal was. Do you yeah, notice, David was had thousands of dollars up on them shelves. You know, like, the stuff just kept changing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, lots of money yeah, in toys on those shelves. Big time. Okay. I wonder what happened to Philip. Oh, he, he got preoccupied. But anyway, I got some more creepy crawly stuff here. I got a vintage 65 creepy crawlers thing maker, paper maker. Now, this thing is wrapped up and looks brand new. It's creepy, you say? See that one right well, there? It's wrapped what, up and looks like a brand new item. Does that mean item. scary or does it just mean weird Dirty looking bucks. or what? No, it's creepy. It creepy? Makes, made the creepy crawlers. Oh, okay, okay. And they said we were talking about. All right. But look at this one. That looks brand new to me. Yeah. But it says vintage 1965. Wow. So that would probably be a good one to buy right there if you wanted to one to play with there's a 65 creepy crawlers creep them creep now this is a tongue twister <laughs> creepy crawlers creeple people modes creeple people that's what they call them that sounds like bigger the bird better Can, bird bird bigger bird King. say that three times fast for us <laughs> creepy crawlers creeple people modes i'll have to pass on that run i can barely say it once <laughs> but anyway i brought 20 bucks for five of them, 1965 modes. Um, I got a creepy clown. Now, this is what I was talking about, is can you find any of the things people's made? And here's a thing maker, creepy crawler modes, a set of six, bangs, flowers, and people, 20 bucks. Hey, Philip, while yeah. you were indisposed there. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931. 273-4252. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get your used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. $2 fees all you pay. Sign in, get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 
2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor, and I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. The day the Lord created hope could be the same day He created spring. Springtime's here, it's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 730 until 9, Monday through Saturday.